Hello, I'm Matthew Weinstock with Hospitals and Health Networks, reporting to you live from the 28th Annual American Hospital Association Health Forum Rural Leadership Conference. More than 600 hospital board members and CEOs are here in Phoenix, Arizona, to talk about the challenges and opportunities facing rural hospitals. I'm joined right now by Todd Linden, who is CEO and President of Grinnell Regional Medical Center in Grinnell, Iowa. Todd, thanks for being with me. And my pleasure. This is a great conference. We wouldn't miss it. I've got uh, four board members and a physician with me this year, so we're excited to be in what's really sunny Arizona this year. It's just fabulous, 80 degree weather and a little more retreat-like, <laughs> so it's great to be here. Well, great, Todd. I want to talk a little bit about the challenge that some of your colleagues and, and you are even facing uh, in that tweener world environment, those hospitals that are not critical access and not big enough to be a, a full-fledged IPPS hospital. What's the situation you're, you're dealing with right now? Right. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's basically hospitals that are between that 25 and 100 bed, and that space is often referred to as a tweener, primarily because it's in between Medicare designations. So sometimes it's some of the more challenging uh, reimbursement kind of environments. And, and uh, there's eight of us in Iowa, for example, that really are in that space. And then there's there are four rural referral centers that are also, you know, just a little bit bigger, but sometimes uh, pull themselves into that tweener, that tweener environment as well. And, and it is a challenge because um, be, between the reimbursement issues and then really navigating healthcare reform as we think about moving to value-based payment and, and really not being large enough, certainly, to, do, uh, to, to move into full risk kind of situations on our own. So really building alliances and relationships is, is a key component to, I think, what a lot of tweeners are looking for these days. And that's something that you've done and you're going to talk about here at the Rural Conference at a session later this week, that decision for you guys to affiliate with Mercy Health System. So can you talk about what that was like for you and how you came to that decision? Sure. Um, it's been about five years ago now. We went through a almost a year-long process. Our board, our medical staff, we, we actually used a facilitator to help us really talk through what the pros and cons were going to be for our, um, our hospital to look at being part of something larger than ourselves. And ultimately, we decided there were more benefits than not. And then we spent um, some time putting an RFP out and spent some time looking at the different options that were available to us and ultimately chose Mercy, uh, Mercy Health Network, which is a joint operating agreement between Trinity Health uh, out of Detroit and uh, CHI out of Denver. Those two systems have a joint operating agreement for the Mercy Health Network in Iowa, which is about 40 hospital system. Um, we decided to join as an affiliate. So we literally pay a fee annually and then enjoy most of the benefits of being part of that network. They do have managed hospitals. They have owned hospitals. Um, we found that affiliate relationship to really be at least a good first start for us in terms of tipping our, 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 our toe in the water around uh, being part of a network. So that was about five years ago, and it's been fantastic. I mean, the everything from the affinity group. So the folks in, in my organization can interact with their peers um, in the system, doing best practice sharing, problem solving, benchmarking, all of those kinds of things. But the real benefit the last couple of years has been being part of the discussion about moving to value and what does integration look like and how do we start to think about making sure that our hospital is part of a bigger organization that can look at some risk contracting, that can look at supporting us and basically a, an approach to thinking about um, medical home and, and making sure we have the support to do that. And has that affiliation been a way for you to uh, continue your independent model? And do you think that's something that other tweener hospitals should be looking at? Yeah, I, I mean, there there are many different levels of affiliation, and ours is, is probably one of the first steps. But even under a managed agreement, um, typically those hospitals are still independent. In the Mercy Health Network, that's the case. Um, the hospital simply signs a management agreement. The CEO is an employee of the Mercy Health Network, um, but still reports to a local board. That local board still has a lot of autonomy and independence, but again, can 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 join up with other peer organizations. So we're we're doing some things with a couple of other Mercy hospitals right now around where we're sharing. And a, a radiology director um, spending two or three days in our shop and two or three days in, in another hospital, neighboring hospital. We're, we're joining together, recruiting some specialty physicians, sharing them across hospitals. Um, we're looking at process improvement, working with, um, with a, a couple of hospitals in the system. So we're really working to um, find efficiencies um, and especially expertise um, as, again, we move towards a, a new delivery system. I know one of the things, too, you're working on at Grinnell is this clinical integration model. Talk a little bit about what you've been doing and what you've seen. 
Sure. Uh, about a year ago, um, we spent a good part of, of, of the year really studying with our board and our medical staff what clinical integration looked like and, and what we could try to do to um, begin to learn. And, and we did like a lot of hospitals. We used our own self-funded health plan. We have about 900 covered lives in our employee and, 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 and spouse and, and uh, independent plan. So um, we're, we're using that as a, as a test ground for our, our coaches, our, our health coaches, our transition coaches, um, the disease registry, other kinds of things so that we're in a better position um, to learn how to manage um, that population. And, and we've, we're, we're this year's premium per employee, per covered live in our plan is at the same price point as we were in 2008. So we've really flattened the, the cost curve. Now we're hoping that we're in a position to invert it and actually reduce costs. So that clinical integration has allowed us to do that. We're, we've got both employed um, providers, about half of the folks in our community are, are really directly partnered with us and the other half are in private practice. So clinical integration model is necessary for us to deal with some of the antitrust issues. So we really can have our physicians working together, looking at a defined population like our health plan and being able to look at protocols um, and uh, clinical protocols and information sharing, looking at claims data and doing all that in the legal environment, all with the goal of not only reducing costs, but frankly, improving health. And lastly, Todd, one of the things I want to talk to you about is this idea of data mining, which we're hearing across the field. Um, you're embarking on some efforts in that, in that arena yes. as well, Cornell. Uh, not something we often hear about at rural hospitals. So tell me what you're doing and, and how that may apply to other rural facilities. Sure. Uh, Mercy Health Network just got a $10 million innovation grant to basically take their ACO, which is a mature ACO. They saw good savings last year on their Medicare Shared Savings Plan. Um, and they got a $10 million grant to expand that into the rural community. So we've got, um, I want to say, 20 hospitals that are now part of that ACO beginning this January, um, this last month. And uh, we're using um, a couple different data mining tools as part of that, um, looking at because it's a little different than an urban environment. So thinking about what kind of tools are gonna to be helpful. So we've got two tools, one that's specifically doing the aggregated data, but then also one looking at social determinants of health. Um, and both of those, we're hopeful, will be able to help accelerate our ability to, again, define a population, identify who is at most risk, how do we get the right resources to them at the right time. And uh, and I'm, I'm confident that that's gonna pay dividends for the people that we're, uh, we're taking care of. Oh, great, Todd, I appreciate you taking some time today. My pleasure. It's always fun talking with you, Matthew. Thanks. And we'll have ongoing coverage from the Rural Healthcare Leadership Conference here in Phoenix, Arizona. So be sure to check for that in HNHN Daily. I'm Matthew Weinstock. Thanks for tuning in.